So as you know, mechanical advantage um, is a, a concept that you guys are learning about. Um, and that's obviously the force times the distance creates a torque. Um, and, and by where you apply those forces, you can either make things easier for yourself or in fact, make, possibly make it a little more challenging. Now, the body um, is, is really broken up into multiple joints. As you know, there are, there are several, several joints in the human body. And each one really has, has a mechanical advantage component to it. Um, sometimes it is, becomes a disadvantage and sometimes it becomes an advantage for us. Um, it also, um, our body is very smart in the sense that if there is a muscle that is weaker, you know, say we've had a, a, a stroke and our left side is affected, so our bicep may be a little bit weaker than our right side, there are certain ways that our body can accommodate that and, and use the mechanical advantage further to help, uh, help the individual with the motion that they're so desired to do. Um, for the elbow here, we have several muscles that cross the joint. You know, your biceps will attach just about here. So you can really see that the lever arm for your biceps is, is very, fairly short. However, we have another muscle that starts about here and runs all the way towards the distal end, so the far end of your, um, your forearm. And so you can see that its mechanical advantage is going to be a lot larger. Now, however, you also know that muscles come in different sizes. So the final torque that is created between these two muscles may be different because our biceps muscle is quite a bit larger than our brachioradialis muscle coming down to the side here. However, because this muscle is smaller, its lever arm is a lot longer um, and thus can create a, a larger torque than if it was um, attaching you know, mid shaft of your radius, let's say. So this concept applies throughout the whole body, even from your head, um, the muscles that attach to the back of your skull, um, the head is really a, a class one lever. Um, and so as we all get tired, as you start studying and finals week is coming, your head starts to go forward. What that really does is take the center of mass of your skull and move it forward, thus creating a larger moment arm at the point of rotation here. So really what we've done is decrease the mechanical advantage of the muscles in the back of your skull. So they end up having to work a lot harder to keep your head upright. And so that will end up causing muscle tension headaches possibly, or contribute to muscle tension headaches because they're having to overwork because their mechanical advantage has been um, reduced to a point that, that they're not comfortable handling. Body also has pendulums uh, associated with it. Now one place that we can easily envision a pendulum um, is going to be the shoulder here. So you can imagine an individual carrying a briefcase, maybe a small suitcase, um, and they're going to hold it in this hand here. Now as they're walking, their arm is going to naturally swing. And so you can imagine as this individual is, is walking towards their flight, the arm is swinging back and forth as a single body with a large suitcase um, in their hand. Now, as you know, with pendulums, we have to account um, using our free body diagram for the reaction forces at the joint. Now, the human body has to do this in a lot of different ways. Um, this will be a little more complicated than just a, a pendulum, you know, as you know, it with a string and a, and a weight at the bottom. What will end up having to happen is this individual shoulder muscles will have to contract to stabilize this extra weight. Um, in fact, the hip muscles will also have to contract differently depending on which side it is relative to the suitcase um, because we've added a large weight further away from the left hip if it's in the right hand. Um, the individual will also have to use muscles in their trunk to counteract that rotation that this increased weight has caused. So the body has to account for just a, a one piece of luggage um, in a lot of different ways. Um, and as you see, if you've ever gone to the airport, some individuals have better strength and they're more easily um, able to control this motion, whereas maybe somebody who's a little bit um, uh, possibly older or, or just deconditioned um, has a much harder time and you can see how their body will compensate for this um, extra weight. And you may even see the, a different rotation based on how this pendulum is influencing their center of mass. Mechanical advantage um, can help the body create a lot of motions um, and, and maintain good strength to allow you not to have pain with those motions. Now, I'm sure everybody in this room has had pain at one time. A lot of pain situations will, will be caused when the mechanical advantage is either lessened based on joint position, um, or the individual doesn't have the strength to control that motion. 
There may have been a youth baseball pitcher who uh, probably had shoulder pain during his career um, or her career. Um, and oftentimes, um, that shoulder pain is really caused by your mechanical advantage has kind of failed you in some aspects. Um, your body has moved to a position where the, the normal mechanical advantage has been lessened, um, and that can be just by shoulder posturing, so the position of your shoulder girdle. Um, that can be purely just strength. Um, it can also be because um, an individual at that age is obviously growing um, and, and the bones tend to grow faster than the muscles um, and they, so they can be shortened um, and or their actual uh, point of location has changed from a op more optimal position to maybe just a slight disadvantage. So what can happen with an individual who's pitching is there's a very small muscle here but it's a very important muscle in controlling how the humeral head, so this is your humerus coming down here, how this ball stays in the socket. And oftentimes, youth pitchers are forced to throw a lot more than they really should, um, really more than what their muscles can handle. And as you know, there are a lot of youth boys with very poor posture. Um, and so once we kind of contribute those factors and, and compound them with a few other things, this tissue really takes the brunt of the load. Um, and so what we really want to do is regain that mechanical advantage. We want to get things in a better position, which improves the mechanical advantage of those tissues. Um, and once that's done, the tissue is going to have less of a load put on it. Um, now, when there's too much of a load put on a tissue, um, your body tries to find ways to help strengthen that tissue. Um, and, and that's a whole other topic, but briefly what it'll what will happen is this little tendon will start to get inflamed. Your body's going to bring blood vessels to it to try to repair it. Um, if it gets really bad, it actually can bring calcium to that area and lay down calcium, which we don't necessarily want there. Um, and so all of those things are your body's method to repair and strengthen this tissue. Now, if we were in a proper position with good mechanical advantage um, for each specific uh, lever um, of that joint that we're working on, then typically symptoms resolve and the person's able to participate in sport um, or you know, an uh, older individual painting their house um, without symptoms.